Hi guys, today we're going to be chatting about everything that I loved in the month of March, my March favorites. Nothing new here. Not gonna blab a bunch. Let's go ahead and get into it. Firstly, let me chat about the foundation combination that I've been loving so much this month. Uh, I just got back from Mexico. Well, no, I didn't just get back. I got back from Mexico when? beginning of March so I had quite a tan and my skin is really really agreeing with me lately so I've been wearing very little foundation and I've just been loving embracing my freckles I've talked about this before but by no means was I ever hiding them and honestly it really annoys me when people comment on my videos they're like don't hide your freckles and I know it's a compliment I guess but it's like I'm not hiding them like I'm testing a concealer or foundation like I go out of business as I think I said in another video <laughs> if I only wore things that kind of enhance my freckles but I do love to show them off as well well, I like a balance, I like to be able to mix it up. So what I've been kind of combining lately a ton is the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation with the Drunk Elephant D Bronzy. And this is a really, really nice, this is a serum, it has cocoa extract in there, platinum peptide. So not only is it a really beautiful bronzy product, but it actually is good for your skin too. But I more so use it as like a cosmetic item and then I do uh, an actual serum and put it directly onto my skin. When I'm on vacation I always bring this and mix it in with an SPF but I really love this so I would only do like a pump or half a pump of this and a pump of this on a beauty sponge and it just gives a really beautiful finish. I did an entire review on this foundation if you'd like to see it especially um, this when I reviewed this was quite a while back when I had much oilier skin. Right now I'm kind of in a combo place. I don't know I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what my skin is doing lately <laughs> but this is a really beautiful foundation I feel like it could be really good for a lot of skin types and I think they might have discontinued their stick that had the contour in it which really annoys me because I love that foundation so much but this is a really good one I feel like people don't talk about it much uh, so if you have the ability to grab a sample which I always recommend uh, grab a sample and try it out for yourself and you can get a sample of this as well at Sephora speaking of beauty sponges this one is dirty I'm sorry I didn't clean it I just used it <laughs> but this one is from eco tools it comes in a pack of two or I think you can buy it by yourself and I really like like this one. I mentioned in a video recently that I want to do like a my favorite beauty blenders or my favorite beauty sponge video because I have about five that I use interchangeably and I enjoy all of them. Uh, they're all about the same in terms of the texture and how they so you know, you know, if you've tried a bad one, they're just so bad. They either are super, super dense and don't absorb any water or they absorb too much or it's too hard or it doesn't blend. Uh, so I have a bunch that I really enjoy, but I wanted to point this out because I use it all the time and I've realized and I'm trying to be more mindful of it now in my favorites videos to include more tools because there's things that I reach for over and over and over again, over like, you know, I'll use the same concealer brush and the same beauty sponge for months on end and I won't mention it, but if if I was using uh, a blush or foundation for months on end, which generally doesn't happen, but if it does, that would obviously show up in a favorites video. So I'm trying to be uh, more mindful because there's certain things that just become a part of your routine and because it's not new and flashy, I don't think to mention it. So something like the Studio Skin Foundation, I really love. I've been using it for about two years now and really like it. Uh, and same with the sponge, I've been using it, not this one exactly, but I have been using these Eco Tools one uh, for about a year and really liking it too and it's quite affordable and available at Walmart, I believe. Back to the bronzy thing, I really love the Drunk Elephant one, so I've been kind of on a hunt to try some more, and I apologize, you may have seen a lot of these products in my monthly makeup basket, which went up not long ago, because I included a lot of my favorite products that I've been using, and then I realized it was time for a favorites video, so if this is repetitive, I am sorry, but loving this from Clinique. I think this is gonna be a summer staple for me. It is the Clinique Sunkissed Face Gelée Complexion Multitasker. So this is a clear, or or sheer I guess kind of jelly gelée texture that is in quite a deep bronze kind of color and you can actually see this in action in my spring makeup routine which I will link to down below but it gives a beautiful glow you can add this to uh, tint and moisture or you can add this to a moisturizer to make it kind of tinted but it doesn't add any coverage unlike something like those custom drops and unlike the de bronzy from drunk elephant that has a little bit of shimmeriness in it and this is completely I won't say matte but there's absolutely no shimmer it's like a clear gel -like texture so if you don't want something with shimmer in it this is great and what I like to use this for specifically is actually bronzing 
after I've put on my foundation. You can totally mix it into a foundation too, but again, in contrast to the deep bronzy that I like to either put on alone or mix in with a foundation, I like adding this to like my temples, down the side of my face, kind of in the contours along the jawline to really bronze things up, warm it up. It looks so natural, so gorgeous, super bronzy. Only comes in one color, unfortunately. Fortunately, that color does work <laughs> for me, and it is deeper than I was expecting because generally when things come in one shade, uh, they tend to be a little bit lighter, but it is going to depend on your skin tone and keep in mind that this is sheer so it is pretty easy to work with but it does dry quickly so work in sections it even says it here on the package um blend in quickly and also wash hands immediately after use. The first time I used this, I kind of put some out on the back of my hand and it did almost kind of like when I removed it, almost create like, it looked like I had put self tanner, although I don't use self tanner, but what I would imagine that to look like there, it didn't stick around for a long time and it didn't stain my face because I did put it on over a foundation, but uh, something to keep in mind, but I really, really like this. A mascara combination that I've been obsessed with that again, you've seen in videos. Like sometimes I, I think about my favorites videos and I'm like, oh, they're gonna be bored. I've talked about this a bunch, but I think it's important that I mention the things that after first impressions or after a get ready with me or monthly makeup basket, what am I still continuing to reach for? Because although I can get distracted by new products and a lot of these things are new, uh, they are things I've used over and over and over and over and things I can see incorporating into my routine in the longer term, although I always have to test out new stuff, um, nature of the beast. But the Marc Jacobs Velvet Mascara Primer, I really like this. I've tested out a lot of mascara primers. As you know, I'm not huge in the false lash game at all. So I'm always looking for things to uh, add volume to my lashes, add a little bit of oomph. And I love the L'Oreal white tube one. It's like six or $7 from Walmart. I also like the Lash Paradise one, but I think I like the original one even more. But I've tried out the Dior, I've tried out the Wet n Wild, I've tried out a bunch and none of them really did anything for me, but this one from Marc Jacobs adds a ton, a ton of volume. I still think that the L'Oreal one is really good. This one might do more volume, I think, but obviously a higher price tag. What I, I don't love it necessarily in combination with the Marc Jacobs mascara that they kind of tell you to pair it with, because I find that one to be like a shorter bristle, thick formula that's super volumizing, and that's kind of similar to this. And in my opinion, it goes better with something that's a little more lengthening than volumizing, because this adds the, the volume and then something else brings the length, because otherwise, your lashes can look a little too short. So I've been loving to pair it with this, which you've also seen in a bunch of videos. So at the very least, I will be able to link to recent videos so that you can see all of these products in action and see why I love them. But it is the L'Oreal Unlimited Mascara. Absolutely love this. Great on its own, even better with the mascara primer. It has a plastic bristle brush, tons and tons of volume, tons and tons of length. It does have that kind of like curved thing on it, but I don't, I don't use that. I just use it like it is a, a regular mascara and I really historically have loved L'Oreal mascaras but this is definitely my favorite that I've tried in a while. I think I like it even more than the Lash Paradise. Tons of drugstore items to talk about today, including two highlighters, one that I'm wearing right now um, but I am wearing a very glowy blush. I tried out the NARS Taj Mahal for the first time today so pretty but i am wearing this highlighter i did use this in a recent get ready with me it is the maybelline puma chrome effect highlighter in knockout and i love the chrome highlighters i really really like them i think they're some of the absolute best at the drugstore super super glowy i wasn't totally sure about this because the shade looks a little bit pinky purple and although that's pretty it's not something i'm going to reach for all the time especially if it's going to be cooler toned but there's a ton of gold in here so if you want to see it just alone on my face i'll link to the get ready with me like i said i am wearing a bit of a glowy blush but I've been wearing this non-stop out in person out in public out in the day when I really want to look glowy but I don't want it to look chunky on my face I really think this is beautiful the collection is available uh, at Shoppers Drug Mart I don't know about Walmart in Canada but it is online at Shoppers Drug Mart too because I know when a new collection launches it's like where is it and a lot of the time it doesn't end up in store or it does for like three days and you never actually come across it so if you do want to get anything from this collection and you don't want to drag yourself to a shopper's drug mart uh, and maybe not be able to find it it is available online because i did look and then the other highlighter that i've been loving even cheaper is the essence pure nude sunlighter so probably for the second half of the month i've been wearing the maybelline and for the first half of the month it was all this i picked it up when i went to buffalo but it should be available in canada i think it is. It's been out for a while, but I just hadn't tried it. I really loved the original highlighter from this line, but the shade was just like 
a little bit off. I wanted something a little bit warmer, as you may expect. And this is everything that I hoped it was going to be. I find this highlighter to be pretty friendly for textured skin, while the Maybelline one, not so much, just because it is so metallic. But I, I think I did recommend the lighter one in a video a while back for my favorite drugstore highlighters. This one is definitely uh, a little bit more of a baked texture, which can be more forgiving if you have bumps or any uneven texture on the skin. If you want to wear a booming highlight and your skin is textured as hell, go for it. I did it when I had crazy acne. Um, I was like, I wear my highlighter. I don't care if I'm highlighting a pimple. So be it. So do whatever you want. But I do like to mention that because for me, that's something important to keep in mind because I know what it was like when I did have very textured skin and I still do have some texture. And sometimes I want to like wear a crazy highlighter and other times I just want to look like I have like glowy skin with no metallicness on it. So this is a really, really good highlighter and super affordable, probably like under $5. Let's keep talking drugstore. Want to talk about the NYX uh, Hot, no, I keep calling to call it Hot Tropic. Off Tropic palettes. This one is in the shade Shifting Sand and I absolutely love the brighter one too from matte like neon bright drugstore palette it is so good not even for a drugstore palette like it's just an amazing palette and I use that in my NYX video link down below and I use this in a get ready with me I will link to it down below um, but so impressed with this I really like the shade range in the video I literally only use that mustard shade and I like I know sometimes people get annoyed with youtubers because everyone's like crying over like nice highlighters and we're all freaking out and being overly dramatic and I try not to do that <laughs> but I got a little dramatic about this eyeshadow shade it is really really gorgeous don't worry I wasn't screaming or like you know doing anything crazy slapping myself in the face but um, I do really enjoy all the shades in this palette but that one especially blew me away especially after trying the Riviera palette linked down below um the yellow in that was really disappointing because it just didn't show up on my skin tone it had absolutely no depth while this one was just so transformative so blendable so gorgeous really really unique and i think i say in that video like i try a lot of eyeshadow palettes um and a lot of the time like you may have the tendency to kind of create the same look no matter what eyeshadow palette you have like I'm not a makeup artist I'm not like a beauty guru like I just like playing with makeup and I, and I tend to do a lot of the same looks but when the camera is on I try to try new things to at least keep it interesting for you and you know for me it is fun to play around but yeah I was really blown away by this yellow shade but overall this palette is really good along with the bright one is amazing. So I'll link to both videos down below if you want to see them in action. And I really want to try their, um, what is it called? The really big one that they came out with, with a great range of shades just before the holidays. Um, but yeah, I want to try those. Let me know if you have tried that one or not, but these ones are super good. Let's talk about another tool, which, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I was not expecting to enjoy this. As I mentioned in my, what was it? Monthly makeup basket. I'm getting a little shiny. It's really hot in here. Um, I tried the cream blush from the Wet n Wild Rebel Rose and I still, I don't think I'm gonna like it. I tried it once and I didn't like it. <laughs> and this is their blush brush. And I tried it as a foundation today. I think I might have seen someone on Instagram actually using it as a foundation brush and I was like, interesting. And I love, love, love foundation brushes for like two years, that's all I used. And then for the past year, I've only been using beauty sponges. But I was like, you know what, let me try it. And I really like it. The only kind of issue with it is like the petals here do slightly get in the way when you're trying to blend, but like nothing that's gonna really slow you down. You just kind of notice it a little bit. There's something about the brush that there's like so many bristles in there that you kind of think it would be super dense, but it's still fluffy. And I just, after going, f using a sponge for like a year and then trying to go back to brushes, I really don't like it. It's so weird because I felt the other way before when I was using only brushes and then I used a sponge and then when I, tried to switch back I was like ew brushes I don't like it and I have not reached for brushes in a long time but I was like you know what let me try this and I gotta say I really like it it's not gonna give you like the fullest coverage but that's not what I'm looking for I felt like it really kind of like airbrushed just just blended everything into my skin so well I, I do think it could work for um cream blushes as well potentially it's a little bit big for that but for foundation it's so good I mean it is a little bit not like I mean, it's not not cheap, but it's also not like super high end, but it's also probably $5. Uh, not sure where this is available in Canada. You can purchase from the Wet n Wild website. This was sent for my uh, my review, but yeah, I gotta say, I was pretty blown away by this. I was not expecting much. The Rebel Rose collection in general kind of let me down. I was kind of like, Meh, it's not really for me. It's part of the tones and kind of the offerings weren't really for me, but this blown away by. I know my hair keeps changing. It's like the end of my blowout. 
so I'm like and I don't want I didn't want to touch it up before filming <laughs> probably should if I'm gonna like take the time to do my hair this should probably be the time but anyways um this is the benefit dr. feelgood silky mattifying powder love this hate hate the packaging so it's like a twist off generally like loose powders annoy me anyways but a lot of the time loose powders are just really good like the uh Too Faced peach powder that packaging I can get along with it's it's not my ideal but it's fine so this is like a tin which I already don't like then you take that off and then you have this and it's just like okay so I can dump it out into the lid and lose product when I go to put the lid back on or I try to like do this and try and get a little bit of product up but then I don't get enough product I don't know the packaging really annoys me but the actual product itself kind of reminds me of the Too Faced Peach Perfect in the sense that it's super finely milled it doesn't make my face look white or ghostly. Generally, I've been using it to set my face, just not my under eyes. Really, it is, is it called Silky? Yeah, Silky Mattifying Powder. It truly is silky. It's like undetectable on the skin and mattifies, but doesn't, mattifies, but doesn't flatify, if that makes sense. If I was to come up with a tagline, that's <laughs> stupid. I, I hate myself. But anyways, it doesn't make you look flat, uh, and it just looks really good, and I really find like it helps to mattify. It's also a good touch-up powder, but primarily I have been using it to set my face because the packaging doesn't lead me to want to like throw this in my purse and touch up with it. But I gotta say, I really like this. Um, I was looking it up. I need to like contact their PR. They sent this to me, and I didn't see it on the Sephora website. I don't know. It's on their website. Um, because they sent this to me with the new caramel bronzers, the toasted bronzers, which I do like and I have used in videos. And this is, to me, it looks like old packaging. And I never, I haven't heard anybody talking about it. But anyways, I will try and find it and link it down below for you, but I really like it. Lastly, I want to mention this from Neutrogena. This is the uh, Hydro Boost Gel Cream for Extra Dry Skin. And I was at a Neutrogena event at the beginning of the month and I was speaking with one of their PR people and I was like, you know, I always get such a great response when I partner with you, blah, blah, blah. The only feedback I ever get is that there's no fragrance-free face products or are there any fragrance-free face products? Because they came out with the Hydro Boost Body and they have the body gel cream in both fragrance and uh, no, no fragrance. And I personally love the fragrance of the Hydro Boost line. I don't have an issue with fragrances unless they're too strong or stick around on my skin. But it was a good point. Like if you, you are looking for something like that. So they were like, oh yeah, in the extra dry skin. But I guess they had never sent it to me because I do have oily skin. So after that event they sent it my way and I was like okay let me try it even though it is for extra dry skin and although my skin is a little bit drier lately it's definitely not extra dry so this is still a gel cream it's uh, the exact same Hydro Boost um, gel cream it is fragrance free and I just I have been using it and really liking it and I wanted to bring it to your attention because I've talked so much about Hydro Boost line and I never have a solution for you <laughs> when you say you want one with fragrance free so as you can see it has that same texture and it's still really light so I was not expecting this at all for extra dry skin so as you can see it's still transparent it still absorbs really quickly into the skin it is I don't want to say a little bit heavier but we'll say it's a little more like viscous a little more thick viscous it's a little bit more thick but like barely like it's still 100% a gel cream so and no scent. So highly recommend that if you were looking to try the Hydro Boost line and you were scared because there was fragrance in there. Um, I love the Hydro Boost fragrance, but this does exist. And even though it says it is for extra dry skin, I think you could absolutely try it. If you do have an oilier skin type and if you don't like it for day, you could always use it at night as well. That's generally when I use my heavier products. Although this is something I have been using in the day and also at night and mixing like an oil into it just to add a little bit more moisture. But I did want to point that out because I thought that was pretty exciting and I had no idea that it existed. So there you have it. That is everything that I loved this month. And if you've made it to the end of the video, you have made it to a giveaway, my friends. I've got a bunch of just kind of like glowy products. I don't really know what inspired me to just, I have like a drawer of things to give away and it's getting really full and I, was, I haven't done a giveaway in a while. So two different winners, international. I have all the details listed down below. So there's gonna be two different kind of like prize packs. They're both gonna have essentially the same products. Um, but just like slightly different. So two face palettes here from The Bomb. The Bomb is amazing. Whenever they send PR, they always send doubles to do a giveaway. So that's why you always see The Bomb showing up in giveaways. So I have their Alternative Rock face palettes. Uh, I have some of the e.l.f. duo highlighters, a bunch of actually great drugstore highlighters. So I have uh, Wet n Wild highlighters, Maybelline highlighters. I also have these, which I love so much, the Bomb Dumanizer. So I've got Mary and uh, Mary and Bonnie. These are amazing liquid highlighters, some cover effects. Uh, are these the glitter drops? 
No, these are just the custom enhancer drops. These are awesome too. So two different winners. As I mentioned, everything uh, will be listed on my blog if you would like to enter. Just a small token of my appreciation for your support. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SamanthaJaneYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.